Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're using the mere mention of cannoli in The Godfather as an excuse to make cannoli, not to mention as an excuse to make cannoli mold witch fingers. I mean, how often do you actually get the opportunity to do... Oh, okay, all right. Enough horseplay? Let's get down to business, and the first order of business is to drain some whole milk ricotta in a fine mesh sieve for at least an hour in the fridge to get rid of some of the excess moisture. While that's draining, we're going to make our cannoli dough. This starts by combining 250 grams of all-purpose flour, 30 grams of powdered sugar, sifted, sifted, no matter how much effort it takes, two teaspoons cocoa powder, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and a half teaspoon of instant espresso powder, which we're gonna pulse to combine in our food processor before adding 30 milliliters each of Marsala wine and white wine vinegar. Then once that's nice and sandy, we're going to add two tablespoons of butter and one whole egg. Covering and processing for 30 to 45 seconds until our table just can't take it anymore, the whole world is shaking, and a rough ball of dough forms. We regret buying that crappy little tabletop tripod and bring our cannoli dough over to a lightly floured surface to knead for two to five minutes until it becomes silky and elastic. Then much like pasta dough, we're going to wrap it in plastic wrap and let it rest in the fridge for one hour, making sure to slap it seven times because that's an Italian tradition that I just made up, and getting ready to grease up our cannoli molds. Normally you just want to spray these down with Pam, but I don't have any Pam, so I'm going to drizzle them with vegetable oil and then roll them around in a rim baking sheet until they are evenly coated with lubricant. Then again, just like pasta, it's time to turn our dough out onto a lightly floured surface and roll out thin and wide. We're aiming for 1 16th of an inch thick. If you can't measure that, then who cares? Just roll it out super thin, and then we're going to grab a 4 inch wide biscuit cutter and cut what I'm guessing are about 4 inch wide rounds out of this piece of dough, reserving the scraps and covering our dough rounds with plastic wrap, wrapping our scraps in plastic wrap till we're ready to tap into that trap. I give up, that doesn't make any sense. Anyway, we're taking our dough rounds and we are placing our cannoli form into the center, brushing one side with egg white and wrapping it around the top, placing the egg white brushed side over the other, so it seals shut. Not unlike the loud mouth of a state witness after insert mobster joke here. Now if we're talking Italian pastry made in 1945, we're talking about deep fried in lard. Why I'm not sure, but all the Nona recipes that I looked up all said lard. So let these guys go for two to four minutes or until they are golden brown, flipping at least once if possible and then draining on a wire rack, which unlike paper towels is going to help them prevent from getting too soggy. Then while we let these guys get cool enough to handle, it's time to take our ricotta out of the fridge, strain out any extra drips of moisture it has not yet yielded, and then press it through the fine mesh sieve using a rubber spatula so we get a super creamy, super fine textured ricotta. To which we're going to add 125 grams of sifted powdered sugar, this is to make sure that we don't get any lumps of sugar in our cannoli cream. And then using our whisk attachment, we're going to add a half teaspoon of ground cinnamon because we forgot, and then we're going to use the whisk attachment to whisk together our cannoli cream. We don't want to go too crazy, but we want to make this a nice, light, airy pastry filling for the decadently deep fried shells that now await us. And I'm pretty sure I've covered this in previous episodes, but the best way to fill a pastry bag is by putting the guy into a drinking glass, nozzle down first, and spreading the bag around the outside of the glass so we can just dump our pastry cream inside. Even though the shot is massively overexposed, that's better. Do a little practice squeeze to make sure your piping skills are on point. And then we just can't leave a dirty table like this. We have to clean it up with our fingers and our mouths. All right, so now that the pastry shells have cooled off a little bit, it's time to separate them from their forms. Now, these might stick a little bit if any errant egg white found its way outside the overlapping flaps of dough. But just be patient, squeeze and push, and then set these aside to cool completely before we begin the filling and decoration process. Now, I personally like cannoli whose ends have been dipped in chocolate. I think it's a classy look. There are a million and one ways to decorate cannoli. Only you can be the Angelina Jolie of your cannoli. Sorry, Chef John, it's the best I could do. Once we've allowed the chocolate to harden up in the fridge for 15 minutes, we're going to start filling these guys with the cannoli cream. So start on one side and swirl in a circle until you've filled the entire circumference of the interior of the cannoli. Does that make any sense? It'll make more sense when you do it for yourself. Just fill the thing with cream. And then it's time to talk garnishes. Two very classic garnishes are finely chopped pistachios and miniature chocolate chips. We're just going to dump those onto the open ends of each side of our cannoli. And then I'm going to leave three plain for posterity, but all of them are going to get a generous dusting of powdered sugar, which for the third and final time has been, of course, sifted. 
plate them up all pretty and then decide which one you're gonna give a try for yourself. I think I'm gonna go for a chocolate chip one. And I gotta say, this is a clean plate club entrant. A light, crispy, deep fried shell, a creamy and flavorful interior, and fun, eye-catching garnishes. It's a clean plate club member for sure, but as has become the theme of the past few episodes, I'm not gonna eat this entire plate of deep fried sugar-coated decadence. I'm gonna wrap it up and save it for a dinner party when my guests can induct it into the clean plate club. Hey guys, I did a really fun project with Coppola's Diamond Wines where we filmed a few videos and they're finally live. I created a few simple recipes that were inspired by summer adventures. You can check out the videos and recipes if you follow the links in the description. Coppola Wines, Cannoli, Francis Ford Coppola, Godfather. Are you getting the connection here? If not, I'm sorry, but I think you'll enjoy the videos anyway.